And then here he has somebody on the ELT, like the face of IOPKC, who is being blackmailed by another famous worship leader. Wake up and win. Wake up and win. Wake up and win. Wake up. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Wake Up and Win podcast. Your host, Blaze and Christina Ferre. Hello. Great to be back with you. We've got the kids asleep, but if they wake up, I'll be gone. She'll be gone. One of us will be gone. But we're going to dive in tonight on a pretty heavy topic, a pretty heavy story. Uh, breaking news from Julie Royce tonight Misty Edwards, Kevin Prosh, um, story about that relationship and. Uh, which we'll get into, as well as some other things in the story. And so it's a pretty it's a pretty heavy story. It is, And we, yeah. we knew that this was likely going to be coming out. There was actually a lot of opinions about whether it should or shouldn't. Um, we wanted to, prior to reading the story to you, uh, just read a tweet that we put out today. I put it on my, um, my Twitter, and Christina signed off on it. And we just kind of put out a statement today, getting wind that this is probably going to be coming out. Um, so let's read this real quick. Regarding the stories that may or may not come out about IHOPKC, to be clear, we are amateur advocates. We never signed up to be that, but we've learned a lot of things along the way that have uh, been ever so helpful and valuable to our own mindset, as well as how we help others who have gone through CSA and SA in general. And the numbers of people who have gone through this stuff is very staggering to us. The complexities of the IHOPKC stories that we've heard firsthand from victims as well as those who are whistleblowers is mind-boggling. The complexities regarding age, gender, status, and many other issues, these complexities are very real. And there are many different opinions on these things. Because we have become a voice regarding IHOPKC and the victims, many people reach out to us asking us to co-sign certain agendas, either slow rolling stories for the sake of victims, making sure they come out in the way that most protects victims, as well as people who ask us to help speed up the release of stories and info. Let's be clear on this. Christina and I have not co-signed either. We know certain details of some of these stories, but we don't have the entire purview of them. And instead of pushing a certain agenda with this info, we actually hope that the professional journalists involved will do their due diligence, follow their conscience, and release these stories in a way that best helps all parties involved while giving the truth to those who desperately need to hear it in the body of Christ. We are hopeful that will be the case regarding every story that is currently within the hands of professional journalists regarding IHOPKC and Mike Bickle and all those involved with them. Wake Up and Win podcast, Christina and I, we are not journalists. We are podcasters. We never seek to break a story. We only seek to inform based on the information brought forth by trusted journalists. Victims that bring us their info can know that their stories are safe with us. However, we will always direct you to take these stories when you're ready to Caleb Aponte or Bosla or uh, to the media with it, like Julie Royce or someone with the KC Star. Uh, so on and so forth. When a professional full-time journalist with years of experience in these matters drops a story, we'll trust that they have dug and dug and dug and gone above and beyond to vet it and release it based on its truthfulness and based on the opinions of other professionals within the trauma space. Not just advocates who are sincere and feel strongly about it. That said, thanks for trusting us to be a helpful voice in this. Sometimes we just want to move on because there are so many opinionated and or wait on because so many are so opinionated and judgmental in this space about what is said and how it's said, but we truly do care about all involved and at our core, we want to see justice in the most biblical way possible. Sincerely, us. That's how we feel about this. Um, so tonight we will be reporting on Julie Roy's story that she broke today, uh, which was March 6th, 2024. So let's dive right in. Christine, do you have any thoughts before we dive in or do you want to just dive and start reading? Let's just go for it. All right, here we go. All right, um, and we'll probably do a lot of commentary yeah. in between. Um, okay, so prominent worship leaders Kevin Prosh and Misty Edwards confessed a years long affair, sources say. Um, and there's a picture of them and he looks about twice her age. I'll just say that. Don't know for sure. I tried to find his age on Wikipedia. It was tough but, to find. We did find that his say, first. He looks twice her age. We but, found that his first album was put out in 1988 yeah. which means he was probably at least 20 by that time i'm guessing maybe 25 yeah so that puts him you know today at what what is that like 
close to 60 or something like that. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know if anybody knows his age. Just, just leave it in the comments. All right. Two well-known Christian worship leaders, Kevin Prosh and Misty Edwards, privately confessed to a years-long affair that started before Prosh and his second wife divorced. So he was married. Um, according to Brent Steno, Edwards told him about an affair with Prosh in December of 2021. Sino's a former staff member at the International House of Prayer um, and Bickle's personal ministry, Friends of the Bridegroom. Sino said Edwards told him the affair was ongoing and had begun seven years earlier, around 2014. Prosh and his second wife, Shelley Bickle, so he was actually married to Mike Bickle's sister, which is interesting, this web. Um, Shelly Bickle is a sister of IAPKC founder Mike Bickle, who's been embroiled in a sex divorced abuse scandal. Divorced in 2016. Okay, divorced that. in 2016. Yeah. So um, this has been going on since 2014. This guy was married to Mike Bickle's sister when it started. Um, Stino said Edwards also confessed another secret involving a man she refused to name. TRR is not reporting the details of this other alleged secret to protect a possible abuse victim. So this story is basically much deeper, much darker than anything we're about to read, um, but can't be shared because um, it could, you know, it's Out protecting an abuse victim. Yeah. Um, Sino said he reported the affair and the other secret to IHOPKC in January of 2022, but leaders there did little to hold Edwards accountable or investigate the other secret and instead retaliated against Stino. Um, do you want to comment on that at all? I kind of want to say, yeah. I kind of want to talk about like, no, sorry, okay, so IHOPKC has known about this since, um, January, January 2022. 2022. Um, they've known about the Kevin Prosh thing and then also the other deeper, darker secret, um, that can't even be reported on. Um, this is like the leadership to not do anything about it. Um, but also then to retaliate against the whistleblower. Um, and also I just want to say, even as we read this story, I see, um, well, anyways, We'll just read it. Yeah, let's just keep reading it because it's going to get into yeah. these leaders and this whole process here. Yeah, you had During the affair with Prosh, the alleged affair with Prosh Edwards, who released seven albums and has a bunch of followers, was serving on IHOP Casey's ELT, Executive Leadership Team. Edwards stepped off the ELT sometime last fall but remained on staff at IHOP. She was a handful of people in the leadership of Fellowship of the Bridegroom, according to Stephen Magnuson, a lawyer formerly involved in managing FOTB. Uh... Magnuson is Seven Mountains on Twitter. Who's FYI. no longer on there. No longer on there, by the way. Um, Prosh was once a prominent worship leader within the Vineyard Movement, but in 1999, he confessed to a string of adulterous relationships. Let's read that. So okay. um, in this article, you can click the hyperlinks um, and see where they take to. I think this is important to know about him. Um, so he was already, in 1999, he confessed to a string of adulterous relationships, okay? Um, I think I'll skip to just his letter. He said, first, I take full responsibility for all the pain and shame I have caused others who have loved and trusted me. I did not listen or heed the counsel of the men God placed in my, around me. I fully deceived them and others by living a secret life. I trusted very few people, and even the ones I trusted, I still lied to. I even used my gifting to manipulate those closest to me, and I did it without remorse or consideration for the pain I would cause them. I committed adultery and used my gifting to manipulate the women involved. I pursued women not only sexually but also emotionally and always for my own selfish gain and personal pleasure. The very gift God gave me to bless others with, I used to manipulate and seduce these women. Hmm. This actually, this apology from 1999 was reshared whenever all this came out with Mike Bickle and he posted his statement and people were like, this is how you do an apology. This is an apology, owning everything you did, naming, like apologizes to women. He apologizes to his ex-wife in this, um, it, it was a good apology. Um, 
how sincere it was, I don't know, because he did it again. Yeah. But the point is, this guy knows he has issues. He admits to manipulating women. He admits to, um, what what did it say? Seducing you, women. Yep. Emotion, for his own emotional and sexual pleasure, basically. Manipulating them using the gift God gave him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so deceiving and lying to those he trusted, to his leaders, to the men God put around him, etc. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great apology. It was actually owning it. And then he says he's going to step away from ministry for a time, which I find this so interesting looking back years ago, how the the pattern that we see, not just in Kevin Prosh's life here, uh, but in the lives of those who kind of have the end back into ministry after they, you know, in this here, commit adultery or um, clergy, what we would call now clergy abuse with like their interns or staff members or these certain things. It is interesting that he says, I'll be stepping away for a while and then I'll come back again, basically. Yeah, it's he like, says, I'm desperately in need of healing in my life, not only for my sexual problems, but also for the way I deceive others. I plan on stepping away from the ministry and will not be ministering publicly in the near future. Um, I also intend to find a local church body under whose leadership, council, and authority I plan to submit myself. Um, and then he goes on to publicly apologize to like everyone, yeah. um, his ex-wife, ex-wife everyone. Members. But um, just want to highlight that he like definitely knows he has issues and he deceives people and all of these things that's who we're talking about here all right got it okay so despite the confession he led worship at ihop kc conferences soon after his confession in either 1999 or 2000 so literally the exact same year that he put that out he led worship at ihop kc or it says 2000 so it could have been the year right after within the year um which and, is and nuts who signed off on that exactly and mike it bickle. just it just and shows what you. do we know that mike bickle was doing allegedly based on the rewards report with jane doe one same things but and clergy sexual abuse Jane Doe one and also tammy woods Yep. From even prior to that. All kinds of things. Um, Prosh was formally restored to ministry in 2002. So literally three years later, he's um, back Amarillo, in ministry. Amarillo, Texas at Moore Church. Mm-hmm. Served as senior associate pastor until 2013. In 2014, Edward, Edwards recorded a song by Prosh called The Gift on an album produced by I Hope Casey's forerunner label. Which in 2014 is whenever this um, apparently all started happening, their relationship, which I actually personally would not call an affair. Um, after reading his letter that he wrote, after seeing the age difference, after knowing hmm. that he was a worship leader, I would... Um, you call that... In your opinion, okay, let's just say, so that, that's a great point. You read his letter that he, he was very skilled at manipulating women and at uh, pulling them in emotionally and sexually. So he was good at it. He knew how to do it. He admitted that he was a great liar and that he could use his gifting that God gave him in music and leadership and uh, the prophetic probably to pull these women into these types of relationships. So he found, in our opinion, and, and this is our opinion on this when we look at this, that you've got a man here that is probably a decade or more older. And, you know, Misty is a grown woman here at this point, 2014. I went to IHOP in 2008. I remember she was probably 29 years old, I think, maybe 28, 29. They talk, every, the talk of the town was that she had committed to a life of celibacy. Whether that was true or not, that was definitely what Bickle kind of put out there about her and, and gave us all this, wow, you know, kind of idea. And it, it, it's honestly, she was put in a very strange situation with that kind of talk about her. Mm-hmm. Whether she really made this lifelong commitment or not, who knows. But he was an older man, 2014, looks over and says, I'm going to do what I did back in 2000 or 1999 to her. That's our opinion. Now, or he never stopped. Who knows? That's an yeah, assumption, or he but where he just did it all, yeah. all the whole time. And, and, Who knows? And now there was a there's a, another situation that the Royce report alludes to, that there's another secret um, that she shared with Steno about another person that she had had an affair with prior, that she called an affair, and that was you know we don't have all the details of that obviously. But what was going on there under Mike Bickle's leadership at IHOP KC that possibly 
groomed her early on when she was just a young, what we called songbird at the time. Because she started going there whenever he was with, he was, had just finished with abusing. Wine. Well, I was going to say he just, oh, he had just left. Um, where was it? St. Louis mm -hmm. where Tammy Woods was, where he yeah. was abusing a mom comes here, starts, you know, manipulating Jane Doe one. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's in this environment, not to mention who else is there. Bob Hartley. Hartley's there. So like, this is the crew. This is the environment. So, so we're, we're not making, we're not, we're, ma we're making I'm just, just saying, an assessment. This is the, this is the culture. environment and culture that Mike Bickle set up. Yeah. So where he wasn't held accountable in his old churches. And if there was any accountability, he would leave and start somewhere else. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. According to Stino, Edwards told him the relationship with Prosh had become coercive in recent years because Prosh had a recording of Edwards divulging her other secret. So that other deep, dark secret that we can't even report on is Kevin Prosh. This is also why I think it's abusive relationship, yeah. not just because of the age, not just because he has these tendencies, but because Blackmail. he literally is blackmailing her. So he has a recording of her telling this secret to him. Um, yes, which Prosh was holding over her head. Blackmail. Stino added that Edwards was deathly scared of the other secret becoming public. When TRR contacted Edwards, she denied an affair with Prosh. She also claimed Stino's story about the other secret was untrue. However, Stino has produced texts with Edwards that corroborate several elements of his account. Plus, Stino's ex-wife... Kristen Ber Berglund. Okay. She had a screenshot of a conversation Kirsten, she had yeah. with Edwards last November. In this conversation, Edwards admits to a relationship with Prosh. Okay, so in the text, we'll share the... Quote, it Kevin says, and I had a relationship. That part is true. But we were considering getting married, Edwards wrote. Here's what I want to say about that part. That's another interesting thing, knowing that he... Was pulled her that far deceitful. Into, Well, he was, he was married. He was already he was married. married. Yeah. He was deceitful. Um, he admitted to being like deceiving and manipulating and seducing women and using his gift to, you know, manipulate them and take advantage of them. She thought they were going to get married. Sound familiar? Yeah. Sound familiar? You're right. So it's just kind of like. These are the type of people that are raised up around this type of thing. And it's the same. What I would. Let me just get overly spiritual. It's the same spirit. It's the same sin. It's the same uh, backbone. It's the same. Just, uh, it's the same sickness mm -hmm. that we see. And we're not going to sit here and just say like, okay, uh, Misty is completely innocent of any wrongdoing whatsoever. But we will say this, these men, Bickle's tendencies are the same as Prosh's tendencies here. And it looks like Misty, there's a secret that can't be reported on, so we can't really touch that or even, we're not going to sit around and speculate, but something happened prior that was problematic and probably that she very was deathly hurtful. scared of. Yeah, deathly scared of. My God, if my, if my daughter was 20 and went to a movement like this, became a big worship leader, and then went through something or did something that she was deathly afraid of coming out, and then it was held over her head by a worldwide worship leader, worship leader that had manipulated women 20 years prior or 15 years prior, I'd be like, holy crap, we got to get my daughter out of that and away from all this. Now, sadly... I just can't believe he did that. Like, what kind of jerk? You yeah, know? yeah. And, it's just and so, so crazy. And so I wonder, you know, number one, um, Bickle, Bickle created this environment um, where she was the number one worship leader on the campus of IOPKC and in, in one thing and all this stuff, these huge conferences. And she went through a scenario like this, a, a secret that could possibly be of, you know, great magnitude that she was deathly afraid of coming out. And Bickle, did Bickle know this at the time? Was well, he, was he aware of this? You know, this is the environment that he created. So anyway, let's, let's keep moving. In addition, best-selling author, The Bible Teacher, Joel Richardson, told TR that Prosh confirmed the affair with Edwards in a three-way call last October between Richardson, Prosh, and Jose Diaz. Diaz is a pastor and former board member of FOTB. Richardson said Prosh also confirmed the other secret Edwards had reportedly divulged to Stino. TRR reached out to Prosh for comment. He responded to an email, I did not tell anyone the other secret. Neither did I tell anyone that Misty and I had an affair. I want nothing to do with your 
BS narrative. narrative. All right. <laughs> Tiara replied, specifically asking Prosh if he had had an affair with Edwards and whether he had a recording of her divulging her other secret, but Prosh did not respond to our questions. However, both Diaz and Richardson's wife, Amy Abel, who said she overheard the call with Prosh on speakerphone, confirmed Richardson's account. Diaz resigned from his position at FOTB shortly after that call. Go figure. Yeah. TRR also obtained a police report and video of a traffic stop in 2018 in which Prosh and Edwards were charged with driving under the influence of public intoxication, respectively. Prosh was also charged with failing to stop at a stop sign and speeding. The video shows a shirtless Prosh doing poorly on, severe, on several sobriety tests. It also shows uh, Edwards, who was alone in the car with Prosh, attempting one sobriety test. However, Edwards almost fell into an officer and was too inebriated to continue with field tests, according to the report. When the officer initially asked Edwards in the video if she's been drinking, she said, I've been drinking a little, yes. However, later she admits that she drank a lot of wine and a couple of vodkas. The officer asked if anyone was with anyone with Edwards and Prosh at the camp where they were previously. Edwards responds, no, just me and the dog. According to court document obtained by TRR, Edwards received a deferred sentence, meaning she pled guilty and placed on was placed on probation. Her file is no longer publicly available, indicating her case was dismissed after success, successful completion of probation. Prosh also received a deferred sentence court record show. In addition, he completed a DWI education program and paid more than $2,000 in fines and fees. Um, Stino said he was very concerned about Edwards' well-being after hearing her confession. So in January of 2022, Stino said he told two members of IHOP KC's ELT, uh, Stuart Greaves and Lenny LaGuardia, about what Edwards had told him. Despite this, Edwards continued serving on the ELT for 19 more months. In October, when the news broke about Bickle's alleged clergy sexual abuse, Edwards and Mike Bickle began despairing Steno to others within the IHOP community. Steno said he added that IHOP KC evicted him from his apartment at IHOP KC. Um, another former IHOP KC staff member, Joel Sorge, told TRR that Steno was uh, also told him about Edwards' confession in May 23. Sorge said that soon after he reported his concerns about Misty Edwards to Greaves. Sorge said St uh, Stewart. Greaves told him that he had more important things to do than address the issue with Edwards. That sounds about right. More important things to do than address somebody on ELT who's being blackmailed by a famous worship leader. I like heard how... that Stuart Greaves is back in the prayer room, by the way. That he's just back in there. This reminds me of whenever the article came out, Veronica's story... And he told the Hesters, um, have you never had a lustful thought? That is what he that? said to them. Yeah. Veronica had a story of being R-A-P-E-D. Mm -hmm. And the Hesters were like, you have, you, are you going to do something about this? We need, this to call, we need to call, call the, the cops police. or yeah. something. And he was like, have you never had a lustful thought? And then here he has somebody on the ELT, like the face of IOPKC, who is being blackmailed by another f famous worship leader and He's got more people are coming but he has more important things to yeah, do than the address the, altar. the issue got to keep the fire on and the altar he added that if he had a problem with it how do you say it sorgi 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 should talk to edwards directly sorry added which is what these guys do with their matthew. like whole matthew 18 thing yeah it is a way for them to completely just avoid any kind of responsibility for anything it's like okay you have a problem well you go you go talk to her. my it's conscience fine. is clear as the leader you go talk to them and deal with it yourself yeah what a mess like you you literally abdicated responsibility and, and I mean, guys, we've been reporting on this crap for like five months of all this stuff going on behind the scenes. And we have already, we, we came at Stuart because of the way he was the executive leadership director of the whole place when this broke. And his comments were so half-hearted. 
like it was half the information and it was all covering for IHOP KC, covering for Mike Bickle. Um, just what a mess left and right. And by the end of it, he's like, I'm going to put this general in charge. My conscience is clear. I've done, it's great that your conscience is clear, but you have led this organization into the pits for sure. And this is coming from, you know, a, frankly, a former friend that truly was hoping that you would do things right here, but what a mess has been created. And I know that the plan is just to get back in there and get the thing going again, get Slyker back in there, you get back in there, and hopefully get Mike back in there. But, you know, we're not gonna sit around and let that happen. Like, what a mess you guys have created. The body of Christ does not need your leadership anymore. We're saying it needs people vetted for handling the concerns like this as pastors you've got to you've got to be able to handle allegations that could cost somebody like there are she had deathly fear over what was being held over her head by a minister of the gospel and you had you more didn't have you time. had more important things to do so i want to say something about this too so this if nothing else this article shows you just the like insane I don't even know how to describe it, but the leadership at IHOP KC, because um, there are two different camps that look at this article. Obviously, I'm looking at this as Misty was um, taken advantage of by Prosh. And I 100% I see her as a victim, especially with this blackmail and all that. Some people, there is another side that see this as, well, Misty was on the ELT, she was a leader there and she was involved in an affair. But hold on, hold on, I want to finish. No, no, I'm not I'm gonna finish because yeah, no, I have no. I have a, a different way. I just was some people my lips. see her as she was having an affair. Now, I don't I wouldn't call this an affair because I think she was abused, but I see her as a victim. But either way, either side, Stuart didn't handle it. You gotta deal if with she your was stuff. on the ELT and you think she's having an affair, like an ongoing affair with these people, then like Handle it, this Stuart. Is this is Stuart. You know what I mean? This is Stuart. Matthew 18. Jesus' leadership is Matthew 18. Matthew 18, go, go, to, go to them. If you're offended by them, go to them. It's like, dude, deal with your organizational, like, chaos. Deal with your... And, if, and the fact that you didn't shows that there was a fire burning in the basement the whole time. And here it is. Now it's a raging fire because you guys abdicated responsibility to deal with this stuff. Sometimes, sometimes leaders have to step in and not just say, oh, you have a concern? Go to them privately. Like this is a misappropriation of Matthew 18, a complete misappropriation of it. You should have stepped in because there was somebody that was dealing with deathly fear. And you knew this. You know how you knew this? You know how we know you knew this? Because it says Steno came to you in 2022. So unless you're going to just flat deny that he did, which uh, I think that would be a lie, um, unless you're ready to go on record and say that he didn't, you knew that she was deathly afraid of whatever this secret was being held over her head because of this man uh, in Kansas City, Kevin Prosh, that was blackmailing her and you're going to tell Sorgi to go privately if you have an issue because you're too busy with worship team schedules and whatever the heck else you're doing i get that you're a busy man but this was like people's lives and your busyness destroyed the movement so whatever you think about um this article or misty or whether this was um an affair or whether she was the victim either way it shows the leadership's like complete lack of what is the word I'm looking for? Um, Just maturity, like, responsibility, sense. like yeah. um, like Stuart did nothing on either side. So did it's, absolutely nothing. Sent them, but they sent them into a Matthew 18 scenario. He said, "Go meet with her privately." <laughs> okay. Um, to he said, Sorgi said he felt Greaves' request was inappropriate, so he didn't talk to Edwards. It is inappropriate. It is freaking inappropriate, but, mm -hmm. you know. Go ahead. Tiara reached out to IFKC and IFKC's lawyer, Audrey Manito, however you say that, for a comment about Greaves and LaGuardia's involvement. I can't say anyone's names. LaGuardia's. Yeah. Um, but no one responded. 
course. Um, we contacted Mike Bickle for comment, but he did not respond. Edward's confession to Stino. So according to Stino, Edwards initially opened up to him in December of 2021 when Stino expressed regret about the prior decade he had spent backslidden in California, dealing drugs and living immorally. At the time of the, of the conversation, Sino said he had recently returned to Kansas City and was trying to get his life together. Edwards responded that she had a past as well, Sino said, and then divulged that she had an affair, which had started seven years earlier when the man involved was married. According to, to a timeline, Sino wrote for attorney Boz, who's representing alleged victims of Mike Bickle, Edwards said the man was a famous worship leader who was much older. Okay, so he is much older than her. Yeah. That's what, that's what we were thinking in that picture. Um, but wouldn't reveal his identity. Yet after asking some questions, he guessed the man was Kevin Prosh. Edwards confirmed uh, and uh, confirmed that. Edwards also revealed a secret to Stino involving another man, but wouldn't name the man, Stino told TRR. Edwards then told Stino that Prosh had made a recording of a phone call in which Edwards confessed the other's secret to Prosh and revealed the other man's identity. Edwards said Prosh was blackmailing her with his recording and that this is why she would not preach or lead worship at IOPKC. It's obvious to me, quote, it's obvious to me that this secret blackmailing was eating away at Misty and preventing her from doing absolutely anything that she loved doing. Stino wrote in his timeline, so Stino implored Edwards to tell Mike Bickle and Greaves about the affair and alleged blackmail, but she refused, Stino wrote. I just want to say about Stino here up at the top that he says that, um, you know, he kind of outs himself as going through a very rough time and going to California and making some pretty massive mistakes. Because I have seen about like conversations about whistleblowers in this whole thing which is basically like, well, look who's saying this, the whistleblower is this, that, and the other. But I think, you know, in some senses, it's the same idea in my mind as victims of CSA, where you have somebody that like, you know, maybe they, maybe their life is a mess and they had a situation of abuse. That doesn't mean you don't believe them. Their credibility is not based on how solid of a person they are, how perfect of a person they are. The credibility is the fact that they're telling their story and we listen. And you look for corroborating witnesses and evidence. Same thing with a whistleblower. Just because somebody had a life life problems doesn't mean you don't listen to the whistleblower. Look for the evidence and be believe their story, listen to their story, then look for the evidence. And here we have evidence of text messages. Lo and behold, go ahead. Sino added that Edwards was so desperate to delete the recordings off Prosh's devices that she moved in with Prosh for two years. This so is so devastating and it, sad. It's so sad that he was like holding this over her head, had her deepest, darkest secret recorded and was blackmailing her with it, that she literally moved into his home for two years to try to delete these recordings. Like that was her life. For yeah. years. That is so sad to it's me. It's actually very sad. It's a very it's a much older man with the with that has admitted twenty year or fifteen years prior to doing a very good job at lying and manipulating women sexually and emotionally. Go figure. Fifteen years later, fast forward finds another much younger woman does the exact same thing. During this time, Edwards told everyone that she had moved to Israel, Stino said, but this was just a cover story for what was real, what she was really doing. Yes, she visited Israel and spent time there, took pictures, but was so desperate to delete the recordings that she moved in with Kevin and did whatever he wanted to gain his trust. Stino told TRR that Edwards also said she and Prosh would do drugs and drink together frequently and mentioned being charged with public intoxication around this time. Based on this information, TR searched for a police report and body cam video from the police department in Oklahoma, 60 miles from Bixby, where Prosh was living at the time of the incident. After receiving the 2018 report, we then reached out to Edwards, who claimed the intoxication incident happened before she moved to Israel. When asked if there was anyone who could corroborate her story of being in Israel for two years, Edwards said yes. However, when we asked for names and contact info for those people, Edwards declined to provide those. According to Stino, Edwards said that during her time with Prosh, she eventually was able to gain access to Prosh's computer, find the recording of their conversation, and delete it. Feeling relieved, she returned to Kansas City, Sino said. But after being back only a short while, Edward said she began receiving clippings of the recordings from Prosh. 
so she returned to Prosh until she was able to get into Prosh's other devices and delete all the recordings. This guy's a sick that. individual. Yeah. Edwards then went back to Kansas City, but reportedly still feared Prosh had a copy of the recording somewhere. This, like, sounds like a terrible movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Stino said he repeatedly urged Edwards to confess her affair and the other secret to IHOPKC leaders, but she refused. So in January 2022, and, and you kind of understand why she was so afraid. And and who knows all the other details behind the scenes of all this, why she wasn't coming forward to the IHOPKC leaders. So in January 2022, Stino said he called former IHOPKC ELT member Brian Kim and IHOPU instructor Corey Russell and told them what Edwards had confessed. TR reached out to Kim and Russell, who both confirmed they talked to Stino in 2022 of January. Uh, both men said Stino seemed genuinely shaken by what Edwards had confessed. Russell said he was shocked by what he heard, but believed Stino's account. Kim said he took Stino's story seriously and didn't see any reason to Stino would lie. Kim and Russell said they urged Stino to report what Edwards had told to Stuart Greaves. Uh, whatever had told him to Stuart Greaves. A few days later, Stino said he did just that. Greaves was stirred, quote, stirred by what he heard. Stino said... Um, but after talking to Mike Bickle about the situation, Greaves reportedly told Stino that they would deal with the matter when Bickle, who was in Florida at the time, was back in town. That never happened, Stino said. Instead, about a month later, Greaves asked Stino to tell Edwards that Stino had told Greaves about her confession, Stino said. When Stino did this, Edwards freaked out at me for telling Stewart, he said. After this, Greaves met with Edwards... Uh, Greaves told Stino that Edwards admitted to the affair with Prosh, but not the other secret. Stino told TRR. Greaves added that Edwards also agreed to get some counseling. Greaves then directed Stino to tell Lenny LaGuardia about what happened, what Edwards had confessed, which Stino said he did. Stino then said that LaGuardia talked about the situation off and on for the next two years. But IHOP KC didn't take any further action. TR reached out to Greaves and LaGuardia, specifically asking about these events, but neither of them responded. All right, text to corroborate the account. Uh, Stino sent TRR several screenshots of conversations he had with Misty Edwards. According to Stino, Misty Edwards re referred to Prosh in his text as, quote, the second one. The first, the first, quote, referred to the man involved in the other secret. In one of the screenshots, Edwards' text says this, the guy I was with was very well-known guy. He found his identity in sin. Stino replies, which guy? The second one? Edwards replies, yes, the second one. Okay. Um, exactly like what you were saying. He decided he was a sinner and that became his identity. No, I'm not saying that. Not at all. That's what um, Stino. Stino said. Yes, the second one, she says. I'm I'm saying I recognized I'm a sinner and I have a yes in my heart to Jesus and I realize the damage sin does to my life and the lives of others. And then she says no. Or she says, he just decided he was a sinner. Her told, he, I think she means he told his stuff and got empathy from everyone and then decided just to live there and say he was like David. Like David. Where Everybody's we heard like that. David. Yeah. yeah. All these guys that want to like just have sex with other women besides their wives are just David in their own minds, which is so wild. Cause anyway, I mean, yeah, David's story is insane, but at the same time, it, it, David had an affair and then he killed the husband and then he was confronted and he fasted for seven actually days. Actually even like, it's crazy. Well, I was just going to say some would even argue that wasn't even an affair. He literally like, kingly sexual a abuse king, basically a yeah. king yeah. like requested a oh, yeah, he married brought, woman he brought, he brought come to him and she couldn't he, really he say no so the whole point is though when he was confronted by the prophet he repented right. wept cried for seven days didn't eat for seven days he didn't do what these guys are doing and be like man i'm just gonna be a sinner yeah so anyway what it's a mess in another text edward seemingly texts about the recording on process device stating i want to get all of his devices and smash them TRR read that tweet to Edwards and asked her what she was referring to, and she said, no comment. So in the tweet, it says, she says, I know I'm crazy. I want him to encounter God. He loved God at one point. I hope he does right with God. And then Sino goes, so don't make me feel bad. Ha ha, that's between him and God. I do hope he is removed, though. You've got nothing to do with that. I need a final end. You're going to get it. I want to get all of his devices and smash them. You should ask Jackie to go heat Jordan Friday night. Uh -huh. Do you know what that means? I don't know what that means. Okay. Just to be sure. Haha, <laughs> yes. But the cloud. 
Later, Edwards texts Sino to forget everything I say. For real, I need to stop talking. I'll go to a counselor, but I get convicted every time I say something. I'm praying you forget everything. Sino responds, I'll forget, LOL. Edwards responds, I'll find a counselor, but please forget it all. It's so intense. Yeah. Sino Sino texts, then Sino texts that, He, quote, went to Stuart after having hours of convos with you about a real situation and was, continues to, that that, continues continues to mess with your life. life. So he's basically like, I'm so concerned that your life is getting messed up by what's happened that I decided to go to Stuart about this. So Edwards replies, you betrayed me. Which is such an interesting phrase that we hear around IHOP these days. You betrayed me. She says, I went to you and you still shut me out and you didn't listen. Cena replies, yeah, and I went to Stuart out of concern for your safety and you turned that on me. You should have come to me like I am coming to you, Edwards writes. Cena replies, I came to you, but you refused to get help, so I went to Stuart. In another one, she calls him a traitor and selfish. You can keep these messages to prove you are right, but you still betrayed me. Um, I, 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 I'm so like, that's such a intense and sad exchange. It's really hard because I hear, um, I guess the argument here is of course that like Stino, this is her story and Stino shared it with Stuart, which if it is a, you know, S a story that that's the victims to share and Mm -hmm. you never, you know, do that um but whenever i read it i see him as a friend who sees his friend being blackmailed and being like taken advantage of and it's like ruining her life and out of care for her what i think i think a lot of people probably would have done some people may be like oh i would never you could never but like it's your friend and you want to help. And so naturally to go to Stuart, who you see as somebody who is trustworthy, somebody who will fix this, somebody who will figure out how to help her and pull her out of this. It, it makes sense to me. It does. It It makes sense that he went there and he reached out to Stuart. What sucks is that Stuart didn't do the right thing. They did. I don't think any part of Stino ever saw himself going to the media and sharing her story. No. I don't think that was ever his intention. People, I think he I think he went to Stuart because he trusted Stuart and he was trying to help. And, it, and I think it could have been helpful if Stuart had done the right thing. If he had done the right thing. But, yeah. but he didn't. But, you know, Mike was in Florida, busy at the time, possibly hanging out with Strang down in Florida. And then Stuart was busy doing whatever Stuart was doing, didn't have time for it. So he sent all these people to, to you know, anyway, it's just, it just, yeah. Right. At that time, Edwards allegedly confessed to Stino that, that she was, she, Ed, Edwards confessed to Stino. She was Stino's supervisor at Fellowship of the Bridegroom. However, after the confession, Edwards became obsessed with where, quote, obsessed with where I was and what I was doing, Stino wrote in his timeline. She would watch to see where my car was, and if my car wasn't at the apartment, she would ask me where I was. In January of 23, Bickle asked Stephen Magnuson if he would take over Edward's job overseeing Stino. Magnuson told TRR this. At that time, Bickle told Magnuson that Edwards was a terrible manager. Magnuson added that, or Magnuson added, uh, but now that he knows Stino's story, Magnuson told TRR he believes Stino's knowledge of Edward's secret is what caused trouble in their working relationship. Well, clearly. In July 23, Stino resigned from FOTB. He told TRR he planned on keeping what he knew about Edward's private, but without asking, Stino said Bickle offered to pay him for the next three months. Edwards continued to offer him small jobs for pay. So basically, Keep just re- close. Yeah, just, just hear that. So he knew something, and he was... Bickle paid him for the next three months without saying why. They're like paying him to keep his mouth shut. Yeah. Then in October, as news about Bickle's um, alleged abuse was about to become public, Stino said Edwards began texting him and offering him more money to come back to work at FOTB, but he refused. Stino then told two key people what Edwards had confessed to him, Dwayne Roberts, a former IPKC leader and advocate for Bickle's alleged victims, and Joel Richardson. Richardson told TRR he confronted IHOPKC's leaders on October 28th with information Stino had shared with them. 
Around this time, Sino said Bickle, Edwards, and other IHOPKC leaders began to retaliate and discredit him to other people in the IHOPKC community. Stino's ex-wife, uh, Kirsten Berglund, shared a screenshot with TRR from the conversation she had with Edwards on Instagram in early November. In the screenshot, Edwards claims Stino stole $10,000 from Mike Bickle, $10,000. Um, so there's a screenshot of this. He... I had compassion oh, sorry. on Brent, and he asked for a raise. He asked me for thousands of dollars. He stole 10000 from Mike and doesn't think Mike knows. Okay, outside of the text, it says, however, according to Magnuson, the $10,000 was an overpayment from Mike Bickle's social media revenue that went to Stino's bank account by mistake last May. The issue was resolved quickly to everyone's satisfaction, Magnuson said. So he was stunned that months later, Edwards accused Stino of stealing. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, when TRR asked Edwards about the issue, she responded, no comment. In November, I hope KC evicted Stino from his apartment on campus, allegedly for illegally subletting his apartment to Kyle Scott, Mike Bickle's nephew. However, Stino told TRR that he... So, just to stop, really, yeah. just to like re, like, reread that. So, Mike Bickle's nephew was staying at Brent Stino's Stino. apartment. And so they evicted him because of that. that. Apparently, yeah. That's the reason. Um, it's just all so wild. Um, however, Stino told TR that he let Scott stay with him because IOPKC ELT member Lenny LaGuardia asked Stino to take in Scott because Scott was homeless. homeless. So prior to this, maybe six months before, whatever. Well, we don't know how many months however, before. Right? Maybe three weeks before. Who knows? We have no idea. Kyle Scott is homeless according to Lenny LaGuardia. Hey, Sino, will you take him in? He's homeless. Brent, sure. Uh, months later, days later, however many, whatever. Hey, Brent Stino, um, you're, you're trying, not allowed to you're have trying him. To, you're trying to out all this information about I have and Mike Bickle or about um, everything going on, you know, here. Uh, you're not supposed to have him in your apartment. We're going to evict you because of that. It's like, oh, sure, you're getting evicted because of this. It's clear that he was getting evicted because of what went on in the conversations with Misty Edwards. Yeah. December 1st, Bickle sent Magnuson an email, including the text from Instagram post by someone named Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Rehashing since Dino had confessed when he returned to Kansas City, Kansas City in 2022. Brown claims in a text provided by Joel Richardson that he's close with some of Mike Bickle's family members, including Richie Bickle, Mike Bickle's nephew. So all of this is saying is that this guy, Mike Brown, is basically trying to discredit Sino or bring up his past failures, which he's already admitted to, yeah. to somehow keep him quiet, being like, oh, you're going to come out with this info? Well, we've got dirt on you too, basically. And he's like, yo, my dirt's already out there, which yeah. I can really appreciate that. Yeah. He's a whistleblower. You know, um, and he knew that if he was going to do this, all of his past would come right up. So he's like, well, let's just put it out there. So in the post, Brown, so this is the post on Twitter that Brown claims the accusation against Bickle originated from Steno, an individual with a history of manipulation and shady behavior. Brown then lists some of Steno's sins, including selling drugs in Florida and having affairs during business California. trips. Oh, what did I say? <laughs> Florida. Oh. <laughs> Magnuson said he was surprised to receive the email from Bickle, given that Sino had resigned months earlier and the information was common knowledge at IOPKC. Later, when he learned about Edward's confession, the efforts to discredit Sino made sense. So Magnuson, who was like basically knew the finances of FOTB, worked directly with Bickle as like his... I don't remember what he was, but he was a pretty big deal, like his chief of staff, basically, yeah. for FOTB. He's like, it was common knowledge all over that Stino had Everybody this. knew Stino's dirt. Yeah, everybody already knew it. So when Bickle Since forwards an email. an email from this guy, Mike Brown, which Mike Brown is on Twitter, and he was, like, helping the efforts to dox Jane Doe or, like, like what do you call yeah, it? Yeah, uh, he's, he's a Mike Bickle simp, for sure. There's Mike Bickle simp. There you go. It's true. So then Mike Bickle forwards that email to Magnuson to tell Magnuson, hey, did you know this about Brent Steen? Discrediting Steen. And Magnuson's like, yeah, everybody knows that. Like, you're trying to discredit Steeno? Like, we know. he. I work directly with Steeno. Anyway, it's just interesting. Yeah, it is. Process questioned. After hearing Steeno's account in October, Richardson said that he and FOTB 
President Jose Diaz called Prosh to confirm what they had heard. Richardson told TRR he was less concerned with Edwards' alleged affair with Prosh than he was with Edwards' other secret. Richardson said Prosh confirmed Stina's account of both situations. He said, it's all true, you know. It's absolutely all true, Richardson recalled. Richardson said he asked Prosh to release the recording of Edwards confessing the other secret if Prosh still had it. Richardson said Prosh said there's no need for him to frost a cake that's already been baked. Which was Prosh's That's the first way time of, I've ever heard that. Yeah, I know. That that shows that the guy is probably um, not from around here. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but he's older. That's all I'll say is it's a phrase I've never heard, which was Prosh's way of saying he wasn't going to help out. Diaz confirmed that what Richardson told TRR about the phone conversation was accurate. You can read this. Richardson's wife, Amy Abel, said she overheard the entire conversation with Prosh on speakerphone. When asked what transpired... Abel said that her husband told Prosh that he knew about Edward's affair with Prosh and the other secret. Abel said Prosh told Joel, it's all true. Everything you're saying is true. So there's multiple people who are confirming this. Mm -hmm. Edwards resigns from IOPKC. Edwards told TRR that she resigned from her staff position at IOPKC last week. She said she tentatively plans on going to Israel and serving in prayer rooms there. Edwards also said she no longer holds any official position with FOTB. She recently took down her website, mistyedwards.com, though an archived version is still available. As for her current relationship with Prosh, Edwards says he is a friend. And that is the end of that article. Um, Wow. I do think you should read that tweet that you wrote. I need it on your phone or on okay. my phone. Um, oh, sorry. I just closed it. That's um, okay. I think you should read that tweet. So let me find it. Okay. So, that yeah. One. So, after, after we read this article tonight, like, there's some things I was feeling and we were talking about. And so, I just wrote this. Um, remember, eyes on Mike Bickle, everyone. This man is the culprit and the groomer. I'm saddened by Misty's story, and she shouldn't be leading in the body of Christ. But Bickle is happy to allow her to take the heat and the blame while he works to, quote, get restored by Rick Joyner and Steve Strang. Um, hashtag Mike Bickle, hashtag IHOPKC, hashtag not my scapegoat. What do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. Like some people would accuse us at times as uh, in this whole advocacy thing that's going on and, and trying to, you know... And, and frankly, there's no trying, just the exposure of the leaders in the church and the wider body of Christ for doing this type of stuff. There's there's all these phrases thrown around like they're, like misogyny, you know, um, like like people just coming against only women. And then there's the opposite that you can see happen where it's like you only give women a pass or people get accused of only giving women a pass. Uh, for, for any of these situations. And then there's a lot of understanding that becomes clear when you start to understand trauma and you understand uh, power dynamics of somebody like Kevin Prosh and Misty Edwards and the age dynamics. And then you understand a guy like Kevin Prosh's past where he's literally ma admittedly manipulated, psychologically messed with many, many women's minds and abused them because of it, which in the church, they just said, oh, he's had a lot of affairs. But when you have these younger women that are manipulated into these relationships by someone who has has a spiritual gift and they're on, on stage and they are in church leadership, there's a manipulation factor that happens that we call clergy sexual abuse. So I don't know what we want to call this here. We read the Royce article. I think, you know, that's a tough article to write. I'm not, I, we can't even comment on that. It's just, it's a tough article to write. It's a tough article to release. The whole thing is very, very messy. That's all I'll say. But like what we found, what was written, we can read that and say, you know, they say they had an affair. Misty might say, yeah, we had an affair. I look at that and I'm like, the age gap is massive. Something else had happened that's a secret that we don't know about. That So who knows what prepared her for this scenario. Prosh comes in while he's married and begins to do what he had done 15 years ago, manipulate, isolate, and groom somebody into a situation where literally Misty thought she was going to get married. Yeah. Married to him. So, like, so you can have like all these people that say, you can point your finger at Misty and throw stones at Misty and all this stuff. I'm just going to say this, like, I'm just going to say this. What is Jesus doing in this situation? I'm not going to get super prophetic here. I don't know. 
but I feel this hope in my heart for Misty. And this is coming from a guy that 2004, I heard my first live uncut Misty CD from the prayer room. I was like a, a 23 year old young on fire for Jesus working in ministry already. And I went, those are my people. I gotta go out to that prayer room. And, I, and I, I mean, I've been a Misty fan for years. And so what does this do to me? It's devastating. It's very sad, but I'm more sad, frankly, like Misty, Misty will be probably the first one. And I don't know her personally, but she'd be probably be the first one to be like, I've sinned. That's like, that's probably what she said. I've sinned. I repent, you know, that, that, but like, I'm just looking and going, I just want to encourage the body of Christ. Do not throw stones at this woman. And people will anyway, but don't throw stones at this woman. I really believe that we've, we're seeing a, day, a dynamic that in years to come, we'll get highly, a lot more highly educated on and learn to defend people in this situation. And it's not just about women. It can be men too. We get reports right now of John Doe's. I've talked to John Doe's that have been manipulated by clergy, by people in powerful religious positions. And there's a dynamic there, there you can say, well, that's just an affair. But it's like, no, there's a dynamic there that there's psychological manipulation, spiritual manipulation, emotional manipulation that pulls people into massive, uh, massive, you know, compromise. And I think that's what we're watching here, you know, just on the base of what we're allowed to read here from the article, it actually looks worse than just an affair happened. It looks like clergy misconduct happened in this situation. Right. And I want to say to what you were saying about like, um, there's a lot of like misogyny. And then, like you said, people will accuse uh, people of like swinging too far in the opposite direction where you're just like always calling women victims and they are never like, mm -hmm. they're responsible for their own actions. They, you know, all of that, which I want to say, if this story was about Misty as a worship leader at IHOP KC, as the face of IHOP KC, um, if this story was about her manipulating a younger man and seducing him and all of that, then we would be talking about it that way. That's true. There, we, you don't get a free pass because you're a woman. Like, that's not what this is. That's true. But, but like, that's not what this story was. Mm -hmm. This story wasn't about a worship leader taking advantage of somebody in a lower, you know, position yeah. than her. Yeah. It, it just wasn't. It, so, yeah. um, but if it was, and, we and would frankly, talk about it. And frankly, if that was the case, yeah, we would talk about it because that high level of status and that spiritual authority in that community. I mean, Misty's like the queen bee in that community. Yeah. When I got there, she was like untouchable. She's like, look, Misty's celibate. She's committed to be celibate. She look, she's just fasting and praying all the time. And, and frankly, that's like a completely unrealistic pressure that I believe personally that Mike Bickle put on her and isolated her to be this like thing in front of everybody. That's what it seems like to me. Now, uh, others I've seen kind of say the same thing, but um, but I think that you know there was a lot, actually a lot of pressure coming against her, and there's clearly some other things that she's having to deal with, and, and honestly, I just hope she has a soft landing place somewhere. You yeah. know, like I know that her family is literally like in IHOP KC, so they they champion Mike Bickle, they champion the movement consistently. I'm just like, are they championing their daughter and going to take care of her in this? I hope and pray so. But the woman's now in her 40s, you know what I mean? She's grown. Like, where's the soft landing place? Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I know that within the advocate group and within, uh, you know, even connecting with Boz and different people like that, there are very, very safe places and soft landings for a person even like Misty at her level. And um, so I actually pray and hope that she, if, if all these alleged things be true, that she would find solace and safety and healing. And I also think even with whatever the deep dark secret is that Prosh was hanging over her head, that she was deathly afraid of coming out, I actually pray that she would find a place to go to be able to safely disclose that and not mm -hmm. throw it out in the public, but safely disclose that. Because mm -hmm. this is like, and maybe somebody out there knows what it is. Maybe somebody thinks they know what it is. I don't personally think it's anybody's job to tell that. I don't. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, and I, it's just such a, um, it's such a, the whole thing's just so messy. But I, yeah. for her sake, I'm hoping and praying that she can find a place to safely 
deal with these things, you know, and get through them. Yeah. But like, it's been, it's been over a hundred days and I wish and hope, you know, for her sake that, um, because she's set up accounts for Jane Do- for not Jane Doe's and and mm-hmm. done these statements to defend Mike Bickle and you know when Tammy Woods brought out her article I wish that Misty would say wow I believe Tammy this is devastating you know but Misty's obviously dealing with her own stuff so yeah you know tough all around but any final comments before we shut this one down um, yes I actually do have two things just to reiterate so definitely believe women are a hundred percent capable of abuse are capable of clergy sexual misconduct are capable of spiritual abuse yes capable women can do, of doing those things are capable so of yeah. doing those things of being the predators yeah. yeah women can be predators too but that's not this story that's it's true. just not that's true it's just not so so it's not the same you can't mm-hmm. it's just not the same yeah so i just want to point that out and then second this whole article though does go to show you um the lacking of leadership and i like real leadership like people who are going to lead and protect it's not happening at i have there's no shepherds and this all shows exactly why they have been fighting fighting to have an independent third party and a true independent third party investigation because this is the kind of stuff that happening. is all over that place all over all right so fi- finalizing on that sirens go up this is the alarm bells the reason like hashtag investigate ihop kc investigate ihop kc not just mike bickle who's quote permanently separated permanently and formally separated you know um you know blue shirt narrative eric voles that the the crisis is now over no the crisis literally is just beginning what a mess the crisis is the fact that there has not ever been true leadership in that place and the whole thing was based on a lot of faulty prophetic manipulation utilizing different strategies to isolate women for the the use of problematic demented men and um and we see the fruit of all that coming out now so investigate ihop kc hashtag investigate ihop kc it's a necessary thing now how do you force that i don't know maybe maybe this gets so bad and so much comes out that finally like I don't know, the FBI has to step in or like it looks so terrible that somebody else has to step in, an agency has to step in and force it because the legal implications and the danger. Because here's what I know, that this guy, Joseph Taylor, who's now the new executive director, Isaac Bennett, those guys don't care about a third party investigation for the entirety of IHOPKC for whatever reason. They don't care about it. They just care about like, you know, doing spiritual bypassing and saying we're in a season of repentance and making all the missionaries fast and pray and cry out in repentance for the sins so of weird. Mike Bickle, Stuart Greaves, Dave Slyker, and all these different people, you know, from the ELT that, you know, have, have been doing this stuff. So anyway, um, that said, guys, we're going to shut this one down. This one was a heavy one. This one was a hard one. And for many yeah. of you listening, this was a hard one for, like, I'll be honest, like even as of a year ago, I was listening to Misty CDs, not consistently, but I'd pull one out every now and again, a CD. CD. I mean, this is Misty A-Tracks, even as a year ago now. My son, our son, asked us. <laughs> Your son. My son <laughs> asked us in the car the other day. There's like a CD player. And he was like, Mom, is that a printer? <laughs> he asked me if it was a printer. He's three. He was like, is that a printer? <laughs> we'll tell you about that when you get older, son. No, but I was listening to, to Misty on Spotify like as of like a year ago or maybe two years ago. And there's some anointed music. And because a lot of her, a lot of her music would be scripturally based. She'd be singing the scriptures and stuff. So, so you go, how does this happen? How does this work? Was it anointed? Was it not? Well, what does that even mean? What was it impacting? Was it not? Did it impact your life for Jesus? Did it not? Yeah. I mean, God can speak through broken vessels. He always does. God actually utilizes broken systems, broken cisterns, like Jeremiah would say, broken vessels. He always does because he cares about people, but never idolize a system or a structure or a person because they will always fail you. Um, we have to put our face in the word of God for our 